hello. Hello, everyone. So uh, I'm presenting a work on constraining the learning of CNNs for the task of object detection. So just to uh, present an overview of our task, uh, we basically are given a single image, and we want to mark out all the objects in the image, like the exact spatial extent of each of the objects. So this is a standard uh, age-old problem in computer vision, and the, uh, a lot of things have been tried over the years. And the current state of the art in this task is what's called region CNN. And what that uh, basically means is we take multiple object proposals from the given image, and we uh, extract CNN features from them, them, and then train an SVM over it, so, uh, so that at test time, we can uh, classify every box as what object is present in it, or if it's background. So the typical way this is done is we pre-train the network for uh, a larger classification task for which a lot of data is available. And then we fine tune the network for uh, the specific object detection task using the bounding box labeled data that we have. However, uh, there's a problem. Uh, bounding box labeled data is usually very small in amount. And for example, for the data set we are considering, we just have like 795 training images with four to five labeled Im uh, data, uh, objects in every image. And in such a scenario, it's very uh, easy for the network to overfit. So uh, what we tried to explore through this project was, can we use additional constraints to uh, avoid the network from overfitting? So to that end, what we tried was, uh, for every object, instead of just predicting what class it is, we also try to predict the surface normals for that object. So we hope that uh, using that, uh, using this additional constraints, the lower, la the lower uh, layer um, feature, the lower layers of the network will learn uh, a better representation that will be better both for classification as well as for the surface normal prediction. So uh, this, uh, we use the NYU V2 RGBD data set, which has like 1,500 total images. And we considered the five major classes away, uh, in that data set for uh, our detection problem. Uh, so the data set comes with semantic labels, which we use to uh, generate the bounding boxes. And it also comes with depth labels, which we use to convert into uh, surface normals and hence get a 3D representation for the objects. So these are few some of the images from our data set. And as you can see, that it's, uh, it's a pretty challenging data set with lots of occlusions, lots of uh, I mean, images have like just parts of objects, and so on. So this is the network architecture we use. We, uh, it's, basic, it's based on AlexNet, and we added an additional uh, stream. So it has, com it has shared convolutional layers, and it has separate uh, fully connected layers for both predicting the surface normals and for object labels. And we trained jointly using both the, uh, we trained both the net uh, both the streams jointly. So some experiments and results. So as a baseline, we first started out with uh, a network to only do classification. And uh, we basically take AlexNet and initialize to random weights and train it only using the bounding box label data that we have. And that gave us around 11% MAP. Next, we, we instead of starting with a randomly initialized model, we started with uh, a network which was pre-trained on a task of predicting surface normals itself. And, uh, so, and that gave us like a 1% boost in MAP. Next, we tried out using. Um, uh, next, we tried out uh, pre-training the network for a even. I mean, for an even strongly labeled task of image classification on ImageNet, and the, uh, and since that is trained using semantic labels, that gave us around a three percent boost in MAP. And finally, we tried out our own approach of uh, jointly training for both classification and for uh, three and for uh, predicting the surface normals, and that gave us another one percent boost in the MAP. So just to qualitatively see uh, what, what's really happening here, uh, these are some of the images what, uh, which we observed were doing well with 3D and were not, were not being able to. Uh, so this is for specifically for bed detection. And uh, we can see that the, using the 3D information actually helps a lot. And we feel that's probably because uh, the model is able to encode some uh, 3D structure of the bed in order to do these detections. So we showed experiments on the top five, the five most mostly occurring classes in the data set. But we, to further corroborate our observations, we extended it to uh, to other uh, to, uh, to 19 classes in the data set. And again, we saw a 1% improvement over uh, not using 3D information at all. Uh, thank you.